Hello, everybody. I'm Gloria Copeland, and welcome to the Believer's Voice of Victory. This week, we're going to talk about the fruit of the Spirit. When you were born again, your spirit was changed from death into life, from hate into love. All the good things that God has in Himself, He put in us when we were born again. But we might not be yielding to it. I mean, if you, you're, you could be born again and still not walking in love or patience or any of the fruit of the Spirit. So we're going to talk about the fruit of the Spirit. And it is an awesome thing to be able to have and yield to love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, kindness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Think about, think about it. How would that change your life? to be patient. How would it change your life to have self-control? Well, if you're born again, you have all that fruit on the inside of your new nature, which is on the inside of you. But the fruit of the Spirit has to be yielded to. And really, the basis of all the fruit almost is the first one, love. We're going to talk about love today, the love of God, which is our commandment. We are to love one another as Christ loved the church. And so we don't have any option about whether, well, I don't know if I want to walk in love or not. Well, if you're going to obey God, you're going to walk in love. So to walk in love, the more we know about it and understand it, the easier it'll be to fulfill the commandment of love. Love one another, Jesus said, as I have loved you. So we're going to start today in John 12, 44. I'll, I'll just pray before we start, and then we'll, we'll, we'll flow with the Spirit. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We give you praise. We love your Word, Lord, and we intend to do and act on the Word of God. So I'm asking you to reveal to us, each one of us, correct us, teach us, help us to do this thing. Help us to have and walk in the fruit of the Spirit, the reborn Spirit. It's our desire to walk in those forces, and we thank you for it. Reveal to us the very basis of all the fruit, which is the love of God. Show us that today in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. It's an honor and a privilege to be taught the Word of God. And so let's go to John 12, 44. We'll trust the Lord today. And it says, Jesus cried and said unto them, He that believeth on me... Uh, believeth not on me, but on him who sent me. And he that seeth uh, me, seeth him that sent me. I am come a light into the world, that whosoever believeth on me should not abide in darkness. And so God's, it's God's will for us to do what's in the written word and to obey the promptings of our spirit. And we know that Jesus told us, don't reject the word. So on the love of God, it's not optional because that is our commandment as we'll find out. Let's look at Psalm 145 in verse 7. Thank you, Lord, for helping us today. He shall abundantly utter... He shall abundantly utter the memory of thy great goodness. It says in verse 6... Uh, I will speak of the glorious honor of thy majesty. This is what David the psalmist was saying. And of thy wondrous works. And men shall speak of thy might and the might of thy terrible acts. And I will declare, or, or mighty acts in other words. And I will declare thy greatness. They shall utter, abundantly utter, the memory of thy great goodness and shall sing of thy righteousness. Now this is verse 8. This is where we're headed right here. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. So if we're going to be in His image, we have to be gracious. We get to be gracious. It's so much more pleasant to be gracious than to be grouchy. So we get to be gracious and full of compassion slow to anger. Well, that's a good description of love. Uh, gracious, full of compassion or mercy, and slow to anger and of great mercy. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And then it says in verse 9, The Lord is good to all, 
and his tender mercies are over all his works. Hallelujah. It says in verse 14, The Lord upholdeth all that fall and raiseth up all those that are bowed down. 16 says, Thou openest thine hand. The Lord opens his hand and satisfies the desires of every living thing. The Lord is righteous in all of his ways and holy in all of his works. The Lord is nigh unto all them that call upon him, to all that call upon him in truth. He will fulfill the desires of those that fear him. And he also will hear their cry and will save them. Verse 20 says, The Lord preserveth all those that love him, but all the wicked will he, will he destroy. My mouth shall speak the praise of the Lord. That's my, that's my determination. That's my will. That's my choice. My mouth will speak the praise of the Lord. Let all flesh bless his holy name forever. Now look at the first of that verse 20 again. The Lord preserves all them that love him. Now we'll see in the scripture that the Bible teaches us that those that, that uh, obey God and do his word are those that love him. Hallelujah. So when we set ourselves to be word people and we set ourselves to obey God and his written word and the word he speaks to us in our heart and we do that, then according to the Bible all the way through, you could name so many scriptures about this, will be blessed. The blessing of God is manifest because of obedience. If you look in the Old Testament, they were given the blessing and the curse. And, they, and, the, and God said to them, if you'll do these things, you will be blessed. And he told a lot of things for them to do. And then he said, if you don't do these things and you do these things, if you don't do the love things and you do these things, then you'll be cursed. So there's a blessing and there's the curse. And the way we walk in the blessing is to walk in the love of God. And so we're going to just study, uh, we're going to study in this teaching, and it'll go on for a while, the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, kindness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. But we're going to start out with love, the love of God, hallelujah. And we're going to talk about walking in love. That's our commandment. I mean, that is the most important thing in our lives is to walk in the love of God. So we need to know what does love cover? What does it, what is it? How do we walk in love? So let's look at, uh, we looked at uh, 1 John. No, we didn't. Let's look at 1 John uh, One for. That no, I'm, I'm getting my mixed scriptures mixed up. 1 John 4, God is love. As he is, 1 John 4, 17 says, as he is, so are we in this world. Think about that. God is love, 1 John 4, 4, 21. And then as he is, so are we in this world. Let's just look over there. Let's read that 1 John. If we read it once, we'll read it again. 1 John 4, 4, For you are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Well, if love's in us, it's greater than what's in the world. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. They're not of the world. Uh, they're... Uh, they are... No, wait, I got that mixed up. He that is in you is greater than he that's in the world. They are of the world, therefore they speak of the world and the world hears them. So this, that's the, talking about the people outside of God, outside of the Lord Jesus Christ. We are of God and he that knows God hears us. He that is not of God heareth not us. So, so if we know God, we hear his word. If we refuse his word, we're not of God. That's what it says in verse 6. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Beloved, let us love one another, 
For love is of God. That's verse 6 or verse 7. How plain is that? Let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. So we who have been born again, we are born of God and we're born of love. How do you get born again? You make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life and you receive Him as your Lord and Savior. If you've done that, then this scripture is talking to you. Let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God. That is verse 8. 1 John 4, 8. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. So if we want to walk with God and we want the blessings and the benefit of God and, and His bless everything, the blessing is everything good and everything bad is under the curse of disobedience. We want to do what God says. So you, you're not going to be able to please God. We're not going to be able to walk with God and obey Him unless we walk in love. So we're going to do a study of the love of God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Verse 11 says, Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. No man has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us and His love is perfected in us. So love, walking in love is not optional. It is our commandment. It is the commandment for the church. Hereby know we that we dwell in Him and He in us because He has given us of His Spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God. God dwelleth in him, and he in God. Now, if, you, if you've wondered how do you get right with God, how can I make things right? I've, you know, maybe you've lived totally wrong in the past, and, and everybody lives wrong without the power of God. You confess God, you take Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and you turn your life over to the Lord. And it says, God is love, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. So the love of God, after we get born again, when we get born again, the love of God, according to Scripture, is shed abroad in our heart. Then we have to develop on the Word, put it in our eyes, in our ears, get it in our heart where it talks to us, and obey it so that we walk out what God is, has put into us and what we are to do in this life. And the key is love. If you're not walking in love, you're missing the whole shebang. I'm telling you, you've got to walk in love. It is the commandment for the church. And what's more, it's so much more pleasant in life to walk in love than to walk in unforgiveness or hatred or any bad thing that's against God's love. Jealousy, that's no peace. Hatred's no peace. Strife's no peace. Love is peace. So love is our privilege when you get right down to it. It's a privilege to be born over again, born of the Spirit, righteousness put into our spirit, the Holy Spirit be upon us at where we can walk in love and we can walk after that newborn spirit, which is love. God is love and we're in His image. On the inside of us after we get born again is the force of love the spirit of love, Jesus himself, glory to God. It's a privilege. And what's more, it's very, very marvelous and pleasant to walk in love. Think about walking in love. Oh, we'll talk about some of these things while we go along. But think about if you are uh, the kind of person who walks in love and love forgives. It says, the Bible says, forgive if you have aught against any. Now that covers everything. No matter what anybody's done to you, you're to forgive if you're in Christ Jesus. And what does that do for you? That sets you free. I mean, you think, well, I don't want to forgive them because they did terrible things to me. Well, they're still doing terrible things to you as long as you're in unforgiveness. So what do you have the power to do as a born-again believer? You can forgive. 
for, now get this, forgive if you have ought against any. That covers everything in life. That covers the little things. That covers the big things. Uh, everything in life. Well, what if, uh, what if somebody murdered my family and, and how could I forgive them that? You can do it because the Bible says. I mean, that's the worst thing I can think of at the moment that somebody would have murdered your family. But what does the Bible tell you to do about it? Forgive if you have ought against any. Does that mean murderer? Yes. Does that mean thieves that perhaps have stolen from you? Yes. Does that mean people in your life that are cruel? Yes. Forgive them if you have ought against any. You don't have to put up with it, but if you want to be scriptural, you're going to have to forgive them. You could forgive them on your way out. The scripture doesn't say you have to stay in a bad situation. But on your way out, forgive if you have ought against any because that's going to tie you up. That's going against the love of God. Pray for those people who did you wrong. Isn't that what the Bible says? Pray for those who use and persecute you, the scripture says. So God is setting us up in the word, obeying the word. He's setting us up to where we can go free. You'll know the truth. And the truth will make you free or set you free. And that's what happens to us when we begin to love. Let's just say somebody did you wrong and it's keeping you up at night. Maybe they stole from you. Maybe they lied about you. Maybe they were cruel to you in some way. And you're, you're just thinking about it night and day. It's just in your thoughts. Those people did me wrong. They did me wrong. I, I, I was not doing one thing to them and they just did me wrong. They're still doing you wrong. But if you'll forgive, you can go free. Glory to God. And the love of God that's shed abroad in our heart has the power to forgive anybody of anything. Hallelujah. So God is love. We're his children. He forgives us of anything. I'm telling you, God will forgive you of anything. He will forgive you of the worst crime that can be done. He will forgive you of everything except blaspheming the Holy Ghost. And uh, I, I, don't, I don't know about that because there's scriptures that you could stand on if you wanted unforgiveness, you could stand on them. But I believe, knowing God like I do, that he would have mercy on you if you were truly repentant in your heart. And uh, we want to, if you want to walk free, do the word. What did Jesus say? He said, you'll know the truth and the truth will make you free. Just the truth that I've shared with you this morning, if you have ought against any, will make you free where you can go on through your life. You can forgive those people. After all, think about it. What's it hurting them if you hold unforgiveness? They, they'll, it wouldn't bother them. They'll just go right on through their ugly life. But it would bother you because now you're not obedient. Now you're not in love. Now you're creating things that are going to bring about bad things. So we love one another. Love one another. Love is our commandment. <clears throat> you say, well, I just don't think I can do it. You can do it. If you're born again, you can forgive. If you're not born again, you can, you can be born again and just say, Jesus, come into my life, Lord. I want to be right before you. You don't have to say all the words that I say, but I'm just giving you some examples. You, you, I want to be right before you. And so I see in the word that I must forgive and walk in love. And I release that person of that situation in, in your name. I forgive so-and-so in the name of Jesus. Now you let go of every, every time that thought comes to you, or Satan brings you the thought of what they did to you and how bad they were to you, you say, I'm free. I've forgiven them. I'm not holding anything against anybody. In Jesus' name. That's the way we live. That's why love is so marvelous. Love's not touchy, fretful, or resentful, the scripture says. That's the Amplified. Pays no attention to a suffered wrong. Somebody did you wrong? You don't have to put up with it. You can leave. You can shut the door. You can do this. But as you go out, forgive them if you have aught against any. 
we have the power to forgive. Glory to God. That's an awesome thing. It's an awesome thing. Unforgiveness and strife keeps you bound up. It gives a Satan a place to work in your life. But if we obey the word and we walk in love, and Scripture says love's not touchy, fretful, or resentful, pays no attention to a suffered wrong, does not rejoice at injustice, but does rejoice when truth prevails, Love bears up under anything and everything that comes. There's nothing that's been done to you in your life that love won't forgive. The love of God. Think about what Jesus does for us when we make Him the Lord of our lives. You could be a murderer. I, I've known, I've known ex-murderers who were precious and wonderful and now born again and turned on to God and preaching the gospel in prison. Glory to God. They're not murderers anymore. They've been cleansed. They've been forgiven. And they're, and what's more, they were peaceful and satisfied. Glory to God. Isn't that awesome? That no matter what's in our past, the love of God will cleanse us from all unrighteousness if we'll confess it before Him and take our deliverance. Danke, dass Sie heute Victory Worte des Glaubens gesehen haben. Nutzen Sie diese Zeit, um positive Veränderungen in Ihrem Leben zu erfahren, indem Sie zuerst nach Gottes Reich trachten. Besuchen Sie kcm-de.org oder wählen Sie 07621 422 2861, um Gebet zu erbitten, Material zur Stärkung Ihres Glaubens oder Kontakte zu anderen Gläubigen zu finden. Vergessen Sie zum Schluss nicht, Gott liebt Sie und Jesus ist Herr.